Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Coach Tobias Forst, founder of Achilles Life Coaching, decade-long recipient of narcissistic abuse, and I've saved myself from all of it. This knowledge and the strategies behind it I'm sharing with you in my videos and coaching sessions. So welcome to the second part of the series called Your Decision Process. Part two is called Are Labels Irrelevant? Right now, I assume you've already gone through part one, which is pain, the teacher you are not yet listening to. If not, feel free to click the info card above me and watch part one and then come back to part two today. So to answer the question whether or not during your decision process, if whether or not labels are irrelevant, the answer is both yes and no. I will clarify what I mean by which of those two, by each of those two um, answers. So right now I assume you're cognizant of your types of pain that you exhibit during your relationships with narcissists after part one. So keeping in mind the current, uh, the current legal situation between Mr. Johnny Depp and Miss Amber Heard, apparently Miss Heard was diagnosed uh, allegedly with borderline and histrionic personality disorders, clinical labels. Okay, fair enough, let's keep that in mind. One thing, one question I hear from my clients many times is, but I don't know if she's a narcissist. I don't know if, uh, if he's a narcissist. After they've already gone through analyzing which pains they have and how, how they emerge and what triggers them. So let's go to your particular situation, ladies and gentlemen. You already know that there is something wrong with them, that there is a certain type of behavior that is just off and that impression causes you, experiencing that causes you pain and that impression just simmers and grows over time. But you cannot yet at least put a name on it like he's narcissistic, she's narcissistic. Fair enough, okay. I will read to you now a few of the quotes I wrote down from the trial between Amber Heard and Johnny Depp. The quotes are by Mr. Johnny Depp during his process of realizing, of making that realization that you I assume, in your life, might have in a very similar way. Quote, anything to make me feel small, unquote. Quote, she would deny having said those things. What are you talking about? Unquote. There were, in, as a side note, there were enabler women, especially when it comes to makeup, uh, makeup creating women who... Um, aided and uh, abetted Ms. Hurd in uh, making her appear as if something physical, physical altercation with her as the recipient allegedly happened. So though there were people that are willing participants, which you will also encounter in your lives when it comes to flying monkeys, enablers of narcissists in your lives. Another quote by Mr. Johnny Depp, quote, the monster was only me when I was using, unquote. By using, he implies the, his use of illegal substances. So the term, um, quote, the term was still there when I was sober, unquote. That's gaslighting, ladies and gentlemen. Quote, I explained monster just to placate her, unquote. What does this show what he just said? That he explained the monster just to placate her. You're getting into the process of being increasingly conditioned by your narcissist and you're apologizing for things that were not your doing, that were not your responsibility, just to, just to quiet the roiling and boiling seas. That is self-gaslighting. You're 
manipulating your own reality and think that this is prudent to do in order to have a certain outcome. Quote, I had a room I could escape to, so I wouldn't need to lock myself in the bathroom. Unquote. The next quote goes, uh, refers to, uh, he refers to himself, quote, that little ball of pain, unquote. The next one is a quote, a question asked by one of his attorneys, quote, how often would she drink in your presence, unquote. Mr. Johnny Depp's answer was, quote, always, unquote. This is something typical that you can experience and perceive in many narcissists uh, when it comes to addictions. And um, um, and uh, substance use of whatever kind. The easiest being um, taking taking a drink or twenty. So keep a mind, keep an eye out for. Um, for substance use of whichever kind when it comes to your to your narcissist. Last but not least, the final quote by Mr. Johnny Depp I would like to share with you here. Quote, I kept trying to no avail, unquote. Nothing you do, ladies and gentlemen, will change them. Nothing not placating them, not opposing them, not anything. It's just in that moment, can you be controlled or not? It doesn't matter how you act. It's about control. It does matter in a different aspect, but that is immaterial to today's video. It's about whether or not labels are relevant or irrelevant. So much for the quotes from Mr. Johnny Depp when he was in the process of finding out that there is just something off with this woman. So the question that I would like to ask you, ladies and gentlemen, why? Why do you need a label, that particular label, for your partner, for her, for him? Why do you require a clinical label of narcissistic personality disorder, histrionic personality disorder, borderline personality disorder, and whichever else you might pick and choose. Why do you need that? I'm trying to answer that for you. You might be looking for a final piece of justification for you to leave the relationship. And that piece of justification for you would be the official document signed and stamped reading NPD, Narcissistic Personality Disorder. When you're looking for that particular label, there are certain difficulties that come with that. What does it require for you to obtain that label for them. It requires them to go to therapy, to a therapist who is actually, when it comes to my expertise here with, nar uh, with narcissism, um, that they actually go through it, that the, the therapist is worth their salt and has a very, very clear perception of how narcissism works, what types of behavior happen, and how the therapist themselves might immediately get love bombed and often lulled into, into a false perception and coming to the conclusion that this is in fact not a narcissist. So to conclude this aspect of today's video, it is very difficult and it will be very difficult for you to obtain that label that you might think you, might think you require for you to really leave the relationship because she's a narcissist. So the three problems that come, that emerge for you are, you're looking for a label, you're not getting the label that you're actually looking for, and now you think, oh gosh, I might be doomed forever to stay in that relationship. Because what I'm looking for, I'm not getting, so I cannot be sure, so I cannot have the justification to leave. Ladies and gentlemen, next question to you, so what? So freaking what? you might be looking for the wrong label. So to partially answer the question of today's video, obtaining a clinical label 
that is highly irrelevant in my opinion. What is, however, very relevant for you in your lives with your narcissistic partners is the label that emerges from the following and only important question. And that question is, does his or her behavior hurt you repeatedly? Again, the only question relevant for you, does his or her behavior hurt you repeatedly? If the answer is yes, then congratulations, ladies and gentlemen, because there you have your label. Toxic. Narcissistic. There is your label. Is it a clinical label? No. I'm not a psychologist and you most likely aren't either. But I sure as hell recognize toxic people when I meet them, because over 40 years of my life, I've had a great deal of amazing mentors in that regard. So here is your label. Toxic. If you're looking for the clinical label, imagine what you're doing on your own accord. It's like you're walking with a fishing rod and at the end of the fishing rod is the carrot. That's the label. You just can't reach it because the fishing rod is in your backpack and you're just trying to grab the... It's just out of reach. There's the label. I know something's wrong, but I can't, I can't really be sure. Remove the fishing rod, ladies and gentlemen. And if the fishing rod is still there, ask yourself, does it look like a carrot and does it smell like a carrot? Then it probably tastes like a carrot and it very likely is a carrot. And as a bonus for you, ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the video, you've now readjusted what kind of label you're looking for. Toxic, narcissistic. It doesn't have to be clinical. It must meet the criteria of does it hurt you repeatedly? The answer is yes, there's your label, go for it. There is your justification that, you, that, you, that you're craving in order for your decision to cut the ties and get the hell out of this. And the bonus is this. Once you've come to that conclusion, there will be people that will verbalize their doubt about your experience and your conclusion. Ah, oh, come on. Aren't you exaggerating a little bit? Maybe you should cool off a bit. He's not like that. Does that sound familiar, ladies and gentlemen? These are enablers. These are flying monkeys. Some of them are blind and the majority the majority of them is blind and some of them are willing participating liars and they all need to go they all need to go because you do not have the time for people who do not have your best interest at heart be your own hero and be your own heroine. Thanks for watching part two of your decision process. I'll see you in part three. Thanks for watching.